I had a pet bunny as a kid. I called him Loopy, and he was just the sweetest little buddy in the world. He was a bit timid, so he crawled up in my lap whenever there was something threatening about. And to a tiny prey animal, the entire world can seem like a threat. So yeah, Loopy ended up spending a lot of time in my arms. I got him when I was 10, and by the time I was 16, I didn't have much time to play with him anymore. Life kind of takes hold of you, and pet bunnies just can't hold a candle to hormones and cars. Sometimes I forgot to feed him, and I barely let him out to play. If it hadn't been for my mom checking in on him, he probably would have gotten sick or starved. Loopy passed away on my 18th birthday. When my mom called me to tell me about it, I was at a party. I didn't even cry. But sometimes, time puts things in perspective. Now, more than 10 years later, I feel awful looking back at myself. I was so selfish and juvenile. I was the entire world to that little thing. He loved me more than anything. He never understood why I stopped comforting him, or why he couldn't sit on my lap anymore when there was a thunderstorm. See, when the COVID pandemic hit, I was expecting a promotion at my job at the water treatment facility. I was first in line for the supervisor's job. The other guy was about to retire. Then came the pandemic, and things got all kinds of messed up. My dad caught it, bad, and we had to sell a few of my old things just to stretch the paychecks a bit. That's when I found Loopy's old things. His cage, his toys, all of it. Even the little sign I'd made for him in shop class. I'm a grown-ass man, but imagining all the good times I had with him, and how badly I treated him, it just broke me. So, I decided I was going to make things right. I couldn't just let one mistake define me, and I have a genuine interest in caring for these animals. I decided I was going to adopt a new pet bunny to keep me company through the pandemic and the years to come. And not just a store-bought one either, but one who needed a home. A rescue. I found a post from a family in the next town over. They were having trouble taking care of their bunny, as they suddenly had to change their work schedules and work extra shifts to make ends meet. They couldn't take care of it in good conscience, so they put it up for adoption. She was a white bunny with orange spots over her eyes and a stripe along her back. She'd been very well cared for. She even had an Instagram account. It was clear that the owners cared deeply about their pet and wanted to see her come to a good home. It made me pause for a bit, unsure whether I could provide that or not. But I was committed. I could do this. That's how I first got a hold of Penelope. I paid the rehoming fee. I got her a big cage, plenty of toys, and space to climb and hide. I brought a whiteboard so I could schedule changing a cage and I set up an alarm on my phone to remind myself when she should get time out of her cage. I wouldn't mess this up. This wasn't going to be like Loopy. I'd learned. I was a better person. I wasn't that selfish, stupid kid anymore. Penelope was hesitant. She didn't eat, but she drank plenty of water. She was pretty comfortable being handled, and she made the cutest little noise whenever I called her name. She'd had some training and could do little jumps and follow obstacle courses. I actually got the info for Instagram, so those first few days I posted at least three times a day. Penelope with a tiny carrot, which she didn't eat. Penelope standing next to an oversized coffee mug. Penelope curled up watching Netflix. It was the cutest thing ever, I swear. We had a weekly game night online. I'd sign up with all of my friends and play something like Pictionary or Werewolf. Something fun and social, just to make us forget that we were prisoners in our own homes. I was going to do this big reveal and link Penelope's Instagram on game night. It was all set up and ready. I prepared a little red bow for her, and I was going to play a little song. So, when game night came along, I was fired up. My friends may look like hard asses, but they're sweethearts. Tom is a truck mechanic working for a hauling company, but he subscribed to every damn cute animal subreddit there is. 
he gets notifications about new posts on his phone like it's his job. Or Rick, who's a police officer who draws Disney self-portraits and sells them on his Etsy page. I've bought at least four. So, imagine showing a room of eight of these guys that I'm taking care of Penelope. They were going to freak out. So, I signed up, told them that I had a surprise and walked off screen. Except, I'm the one who was in for the surprise. I don't know how I didn't hear it, but the bulb burst in Penelope's nightlight. Some kind of short circuit problem. There was glass all over the backside of the cage and scorch marks on the plastic bottom. And right there, in the corner, was Penelope. She was chewing on glass. There was this big shard that had come right out of the light and she was chewing it. Not even nibbling, just chowing down, making these pain little squeaks. I freaked the hell out. I think I screamed. I told the latch open and tried batting the glass out of her paws and grabbed her. She freaked out too and squirmed free with a squeal. Small fragments of glass were stuck in her fur and I cut myself on my thumb trying to pick her up. She fell out of my hands, landed on her side and scurried under the couch. I crawled after her, drops of blood dripping on my carpet. I tried calling out to her, but she stopped making the cute little response noise. Instead, she kept crunching glass. Crunch, crunch. That little nose twitching up and down, tiny paws gently holding a razor sharp edge. I had to cancel game night. The reveal would have to wait. I tried to coax her out of there. I tried toys, water, vegetables, treats. Nothing. All she wanted was to sit there and munch on a shard. I felt awful. Absolutely awful. I'd failed to take care of their little darling bunny. Then, she was done. She'd eaten it all. And she was calm again. She came up and poked her nose against my bloody thumb, and I almost cried with relief. I scooped her up in my arms and tried to find a number for an emergency vet. However, it was almost midnight and nothing was open. The few places you could call during an emergency were either closed due to COVID or had queues that lasted for hours. I tried going online to find a chat, posting in forums, anything, but this was urgent. Never did I even consider that Penelope was fine, but she was, she just liked being carried. As she slept on the couch, I cleaned her cage and put in a new bedding. I pulled in my comfiest chair so I could watch her all night just in case she got worse. She looked so peaceful that I was scared she wouldn't wake up. I carefully put her in her freshly clean cage and she fell asleep instantly. I just sat there watching her. She slept without a hitch through the night, unlike me. The next day, I finally got a hold of a vet. I told them about the glass, and they just didn't believe me. If that was true, she'd be dead, they said. There's just no way for a bunny to survive that. They could take a look, but the price hike was insane. They didn't deem this a reasonable emergency. They just didn't believe that she'd actually eaten glass. I honestly considered paying up, but the bills had already been piling up since my dad got sick. I hadn't realized I could be looking at a sizable vet bill in the first week. I tried keeping an eye on her myself, but she was sneaky. She would slip out of my sight and hide, and I could find her chewing on things. Not to eat, but to test them, like she was looking for something. One night, as I was falling asleep, I heard this strange thumping noise. Rhythmic. I turned on the lights, but couldn't see anything. As the thumping stopped, I just pulled up the covers and got back to sleep. I imagined hearing something in the living room, but I couldn't be bothered. Maybe I was being lazy, or maybe the sound really was just subtle. The next day, I walked into a scene I'll never forget. Penelope had gotten out of a cage and rammed her head against my bookshelf. A few things had fallen off. A picture frame, a few books, a teddy bear, and finally, a bowl of glass marbles. She'd eaten it. 
all of it. The glass frame was empty, and the marbles were just... gone. And there's that Penelope, staring at me, glass balls forcing a shape in her stomach, like a bunch of grapes. She didn't blink. She just sat there, trying to get the glass dust out of her whiskers with those little paws. I approached her, slowly. She let me pick her up, and it felt like holding a furry bag of marbles. She cuddled up to me. I felt something cut my hand. I shifted my weight, held Penelope with my other arm, and noticed a large shard had cut me. But this was different. It was poking out of her skin, right behind her ear. A long sliver of glass, no thicker than a sheet of paper. And now, my blood was on it. Penelope didn't seem too bothered. By now, I was trying to call the owners. There was something wrong, seriously wrong. I just couldn't get a hold of them. They weren't answering my calls, and they blocked me on most social media sites. They were ignoring me. I tried to find some common friends, or some other kind of inn, but there was nothing. These people had lived in a small house down by a lake in Tomskog, Minnesota, and now they had just packed up and left. What the hell even happened to them? I was getting the sense that maybe the bunny had something to do with it. There was something strange about it, and not just the glass eating. She was starting to look at me funny. The cute little noises she made as I called her name started to sound more like growls, and I could have sworn she'd grown larger. I decided to lock her in a cage and take her to the vet the next day. I'd pay the damn bill. I couldn't give up now, glass or no glass. I'd taken on this responsibility, goddammit. I should have known better. She broke out of a cage again that following night, and this time, she was just gone. I tried looking everywhere, every inch of the house that a bunny could reach, and even places they couldn't. I checked the foundation, I checked for tracks, nothing. She was just gone. I must have looked for at least two full days. There were no more cute Instagram pics after that. About a week later, I came home with a pizza and a beer. I unlocked the front door, set the box and brew down, and heard this strange noise. A clinking sound. There was a cold breeze coming from the bedroom. Thinking it was a burglar, I got a kitchen knife and read it the emergency number of my phone. I stepped into the bedroom. And there was Penelope. She'd grown to the size of a large cat, more hair than pet bunny. Stray rays of light from the living room got caught in the hundreds of glass shards that covered her body, masking her white and orange fur. Her eyes were large and had a strange light to them. It took me a few seconds to realize her eyes were actually glass marbles, gleaming with color. She'd shed most of her fur, as she crashed through the window and climbed in. Clumps of skin hung from the broken frame, and she was gnawing on the glass shards. Glass claws protruded from her paws. Her glass fur clinked and broke as she moved, leaving a sharp trail behind. And yet, not a single drop of blood. Penelope? The cute little noise she used to make turned into a scream. As she did a little hop, the shards in her fur started to break. As they did, they seemed to grow back, or never really run out. A cloud of glass dust hung in the air around her. Then, she charged me. I was terrified. I'd never seen anything like it. I'd never heard a sound like that. The crunch, crunch, crunch of breaking glass, getting closer by the millisecond. I fell backwards, hitting the back of my head on the bedroom door, and tumbled out into the living room on all fours. Penelope, with her glass marble eyes, just charged straight ahead into the door. Her eyes fell out and rolled away. They clinked together like they'd done in countless rounds of childhood games. Penelope snarled at me, her teeth replaced with long shards of razor-thin glass. She couldn't see me. I just stayed still on all fours and held my breath. She waddled out next to me barely stroking my right arm. Glass was dropping from her like snowflakes. She hissed like a snake, bursting into attacks in random directions. 
The living room light made the shard sparkle. Suddenly, she stopped and made a noise as if to regurgitate. A new marble popped into her eye socket, but she still couldn't see me. Had I not been forcing my breath down, I would have screamed. This was a nightmare. Then, my letter of the cage alarm rang. I'd forgotten about it. A second marble popped into place as she charged me. I threw my phone at her, but it just smashed into the side of her cage. I got up on my feet and rolled up onto the kitchen table, hearing the clinking of her claws smatter against the ceramic tiles underneath. She ran straight into a chair, tipping it over. She thrashed in a rage, rolling around, spreading glass everywhere, like some kind of crocodile death roll. She attacked the chair over and over, making sure he wasn't moving. I just sat there, knees curled up to my chin, shaking like a leaf. She slowly walked around, listening for clues. She made this strange croaking noise while still under the table, sounding like a frog. As she started banging her head on one of the table legs, I panicked. I had to get out of there. I counted down from three, rolled off the table, and burst into a sprint. Only it ended far too fast. I stepped on something small, squishy and sharp. Something went right through the sole of my foot. Screaming, I crawled out of the kitchen. My foot was bleeding all over the white tiles, and there, peeking out from under the kitchen table, was Penelope. I crushed half her head, but she didn't seem to mind. Now she had the space for three marbles in her head instead of only two. With every hop, more marbles tumbled out, like a broken goddamn gumball machine. I crawled back, screaming incoherently. I caught the edge of the hallway carpet and had an idea. I pulled it up, dust and all, and threw it on Penelope as she charged. I crawled up, wrapped her in it, and put the entire thing in a black garbage bag. I barely even remember limping around the kitchen, looking for duct tape, as the enraged thing twisted and turned, desperate to get out. I'm not proud of beating that bag only to freak out once it started twitching again. I'm not proud of trying to run it over with my car, and I'm definitely not proud of setting the damn thing on fire. But what was I supposed to do? Bottom line is, always kill it with fire. Jesus Christ Almighty, there was no way I was going to let that thing live. I guess I was never meant to own a pet. Maybe this was my punishment. I've closed her Instagram account, and I've yet to get a hold of her original owners. I get dozens of messages from fans asking me what happened, and I don't know what to say. I don't have the heart to tell them she died, or what really happened. I can't tell them about those pain screams fading with the embers. Never get a pet from Tomskog, Minnesota. That town is twisted. <laughs>